So, now the download is complete and um, you have a tremendous amount of files now inside your course planner folder. I just want to show you, we have all these files in here now and actually the files that you downloaded is inside this one called node modules and yeah, you can have a look at it, there's a lot of files in here. Um, and, and that's why it took a bit of time, that's why it took you around 10 minutes to download this. So we've downloaded a lot of files. We've also downloaded files inside this one called Bower Components on the client. We'll get into this as we move along. But I just wanted to show you, and that's why it took a bit of time. And of course, all of this is pretty much because we used the Angular full stack setup to scaffold or to automatically create a web application. They've generated and prepared all of this for us using a package JSON file and a Bower JSON file. We'll get into those later as well. No more talking, let's start up our application. Now, since we chose Mongo database to be our database of choice, we need to start it up so that it's running before we start our application. So I hope you guys remember how to do this. Let me just right click here and say, I want another command prompt. And let me go into the Mongo uh, database. Uh, you remember finding your way into program files program files and then into server or sorry mongod mongodb and then into um, server in there we're going to oh my god my keyboard is killing me right now tree 2 and then and then we are here and I can write mongod to start it up and there we have have the mongo running now remember you have to start this to use the Mongo database locally, okay? And as soon as we're going to start our full stack application in a second, we need to have a Mongo running so that it can connect into that database right away. And behind the scenes, it'll do a lot of things like create a database for us, it'll populate the database for us, it'll put in some information for us, seed the database, I'll show you all of this later. So now the Mongo database is running, and remember, you're not allowed to shut it down, but you can hide it. So get that out of the way, hide it right now. And then we'll write the first command to get our server running, which is grunt serve. Okay, grunt serve starts it all up. And grunt is a tool that we use to, we can actually do a lot of things with our grunt setup. We'll start digging into this build tool later on. But right now, just write grunt serve and press enter. Give it a second or two and you have a running application. So you can start reading all of this, but the important part is that it's launching your browser, opening the page localhost 9000, and actually right here we have our full featured application up and running. That's your first web application right there. Let's go back to the um, command prompt here. Let's just look at the right one. So as you'll see, it actually shows now express server listening on port 9000. So we're ready, we're ready to go. Life is good. Let's just have a quick tour of what we can actually do now. So we have um, some kind of uh, things here. We don't know what that is yet, but if I remove it, just delete it. It's actually also deleted in the Mongo database. I'll show you later. I can make new things. Shno with an, with an H in there. And I'll actually also show you that the socket I was running here which is a real-time communication between browsers. So I'll just pull this out here. I'll have that there. And when I write uh, bingo here, you'll actually see it popping out right away here. And, and so you have, you have an application here where you can actually real-time delete things and other guys will get it on their browsers as well. Of course, right now it's only localhost, so it's not working. But if you put this into the cloud right now, it would actually show that you would be able to see it added and remove in the different sites. So I just want to do one more thing. I want to try and log in. Um, so let's go here to login. Let's actually shut this, da da this down again and, and jump into this one over here. I'll do login. And here it tells me you can log in as an administrator admin at example.com and then use the password admin. Not very safe, but just to show you that it's running, I'll do a login, I'll save the password, and now you can see I'm actually locked in and a new tab popped up here. So now I can actually delete and edit users, or at least I can see them. We will uh, make that work later. 
I also have a way for me to change my own password because I'm logged in now. And again, all of this is now set up for us. So now you actually have a, a, a running application locally that we can start playing around with in the next lesson.